Well, Uncle Dan. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There's there's one group of people in this country. Well, in that country, I'm in Canada. That's right. You're in the uh, wrong country. There's one group of people in that country that uh, are just underrepresented and and <laughs> and not getting a lot of love these days. And by that, you I mean, mean white people. Yeah, and specifically white Christians, I would imagine, and particularly one whose name is actually Paula White. Oh, oh God! I love might her cooking the, show. <laughs> might be the whitest <laughs> name ever. Yeah. Uh, well, dear uncles, over the past year, we have covered a lot of subjects, some fun, some horrid. But one thing we've kept a Most, little bit mostly of, horrid. Oh, a lot of horrid. But the horrid can be fun. Some the horridly fun be stuff. Fun. That's right. Um, I mean, but, the family of David, that was a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing we've kept a little bit of distance from is the state of our politics in the current uh, era. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, that is, of course, unless one of these dopey zealots happens to wander into our lane, like, say, former Attorney General Jeff Sessions, now safely back home in his forest, uh, or <laughs> my pillow creator, Mike Lindell. Um, and uh, don't worry, Kirsten Nielsen, we'll get to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, these are actually my least favorite subjects because they are the most depressing. Uh, it's all fun and games to joke about some dead god or some extinct religion or stupid Bible story. But when we talk about politics, it's generally real people doing real harm in real time. So in the spirit of looking deep into our politics of this terrible, terrible timeline, I give you Paula White. Uh, she is the head of the New Destiny Christian Center, mm. which is an enormous megachurch in Apopka, Florida. I hope I pronounced what, that right. I what was wrong with the place. old Destiny? <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? How do you get a New Destiny? I, I would like to know how these people name their megachurches, if there's some megachurch name generator or something. It can't be easy to like trade in one Destiny for another. That's like, right. you you got to bribe somebody high up. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm, um, I'm already, I'm, she's already suspect in my book. Yeah. Well, she is also coincidentally the host of the Paula White Show, which appears on, among other outlets, the Trinity Broadcast Network. Surprise. Well, that, mm. that was fortuitous that she that she had that name. I know. She was born for the role. <laughs> uh, she also hosts, let me see if I'm going to pronounce this right, a podcast, which, <laughs> according to Wikipedia and backed up by my own, my own personal experience, is the least likely thing to get you laid if you bring it up in a bar. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paula claims to have ministered we'll, to the we'll likes We'll put of, that to the test this week in uh, yeah. Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to claim that I am the host of the Paula White podcast. We'll and we'll see that, what happens. We'll put that to the test among all the other podcasters at the American Atheist <laughs> yeah. Convention. Just hitting on, uh, hitting on Eli. Hey, I don't know if you know this, but I got a, I got a podcast. <laughs> It's like a Simpsons episode. Uh, if, so if, Paul, I hear Vel, if I hear Velcro, sh Velcro shoes slowly being undone from your bedroom door, <laughs> I'll, know what's, I'll know what's happening. <laughs> Just as long as he always uses the, pa pa the Paul the Pug of Pegacorn voice while he's yeah. having sex. I don't, I don't know if there's a sexy way to take off Velcro shoes. I'm thinking probably not. But, <laughs> but if anybody he'll, can he'll, pull it off, it's Eli. You'll find a way. <laughs> so... Paula claims to have ministered to the likes of Michael Jackson, a name I assume she drops less and less since the release of Leaving Neverland. Mm, um, no, I doubt, <laughs> I doubt that that frequency has gone down in the slightest. In that community, wait, probably wait, not. Wait, what, what about Michael Jackson? She claims to have ministered to Michael Jackson. Well, uh, and, Good job, yeah, Paula right. White. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And to it Tyra took. Banks. What's that? It took. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, she claims to have ministered to the likes of Tyra Banks, among others. She's fast friends with Benny Hinn, who we covered back oh, in episode yeah. 68. Oh, yeah. Basically, she is a run-of-the-mill grifter using religion to stick her hands in the pockets of the poor, the desperate, and the gullible. And the rich. Uh, and the rich. I'm just going to say. The gullible can be rich. Yeah. And desperate. In a, in a first. In a first. We've, that, this is just not something people do. So that's, this that's is interesting. Right. It's amazing. And all that alone <laughs> is enough for us to throw some shade her way. However, this pedestrian televangelist just so happens to have a key card to the White House because Paula, Paula Paula, I put Paula Paula in my notes, <laughs> is the spiritual advisor to one Donald J. Trump, which is why we're talking about her today. So That might be the easiest job in America. I know. Well, you're, yeah. you're advising yeah. him on a thing he can't. <laughs> exactly. The only useful thing I can see the spiritual advisor to Donald Trump doing is throwing holy water at him while chanting, the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> Other than that, you're doing it wrong. 
Well, so. there's there's literally. I mean, it's 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 like I I. What is it like? I it's like literally yelling at a deaf person. You, there's no point to it. There, yes, but right. there you go. Right. Uh, so just the other day, she claimed that God called her specifically to minister to Trump. And mm. as we'll discuss, the two were made for each other. Mm. Um, she looks exactly like what you'd think she would have to look like in order for Donald Trump to be interested in her. She looks like the botulinum toxin took over the host organism. <laughs> um, <laughs> and along with being his spiritual advisor, uh, she also gave an invocation at his inauguration. Right. So let's talk about her just a little bit. Uh, born Paula Michelle Fur in Tupelo, Mississippi in 1966. <laughs> Fur? Fur. How do you spell um, that? F-U-R-R. Oh, God. Uh, there you go. Her early yeah. life was pretty messy. Uh, her parents split when she was five years old, and then her father ended up committing suicide. Uh, she lived with her mother and family in poverty for years. Uh, she was raised by caregivers that she claims uh, abused her sexually and physically. Mm. Um, and she's also been very vocal about her years-long uh, battle against bulimia. Mm. So did these traumatic experiences uh, lead her to a life of empathy and charity for those in similar conditions? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> so, Can I 18, think about it for a while? Yeah, take, take your time. <laughs> okay. Um, at 18, she converted to evangelical Christianity at the Damascus Church of God in Maryland, where she claimed to have visions, saying, quote, When I was just 18 years old, the Lord gave me a vision that every time I opened my mouth and declared the word of the Lord, there was a man manifestation of his spirit where people would I were either healed, delivered, or saved. When I shut my mouth, they fell off into utter darkness, and God spoke to me and said, I called you to preach the gospel. All that begging the question, why do you keep shutting your mouth? So <laughs> in 1991, she and her husband at the time, Randy White, where she got her, her name, formed I wish the, it was a hyphenate. I wish she would called herself Fur White. Fur White. <laughs> She's I'm totally for, white. for white or yeah. white fur. <laughs> <laughs> um, she formed uh, with her husband at the time the Without Walls International Church or WWIC. Which so did the did the roof fall down? No, by all accounts, it had walls. Um, <laughs> they weren't initially successful, and in one of many layers of hypocrisy, they survived on government assistance and charity. So in the 2000s, the ministry finally took off, claiming more than 20,000 regular Sunday attendees, as well as opening more locations. And according to an audit made public by the U.S. Senate, her ministry took in approximately $150 million between 2004 and 2006. Mm. Jesus. In so, two years? Two years. So wow. would it surprise you that in 2014, Without Walls International Church filed for bankruptcy? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it came as a surprise to the Evangelical Christian Credit Union, which was owed $29 million. Holy shit. Wow. Also, I just got to say... Giving your money to the Evangelical Christian Credit Union seems about as certain a way to lose your money as donating to the Enron Madoff Rehabilitation Fund. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, White claims to have completely removed herself from the ministry at the time of the bankruptcy, saying she had nothing to do with it, and I say we believe her. At the time of the bankruptcy is always the time when the guilty person is fleeing. Exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah. just watch they, for that. They so, shouldn't have bought that monorail. <laughs> <laughs> Her whole raison d'etre is to separate her followers from their money in any way she can. For example, last year she launched the First Fruits campaign where she sold resurrection seeds to her <laughs> followers, followers for the stupid price of $1,144. Get it? Um, short of that, she encouraged her followers to donate one month's salary or terrible things would happen. Um, Isn't First Fruits the thing that King gets to do? Is that prima that, nocta? Yeah. I thought, <laughs> okay. Maybe. Okay. So she did that as well. She did. She did that. She was yeah. also the bad guy in Braveheart. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we're all the bad guy in Braveheart, Doug. <laughs> By the way, I just Googled her. I Google imaged her because I wanted to see what she looks like. And it <clears throat> appears that she's married to Huey Lewis. I'm, I don't think oh, I don't know if that's him or not, but that's what it looks like. He is totally a low rent David Copperfield. David Copperfield. <laughs> yeah. isn't he? Uh, not that there was much of a, a moral core to corrupt. But as we've seen over the past few years, one must abandon the humanity that you have left in order to enter Donald Trump's inner circle, and Paula White has done so with alacrity. Uh, her comments about everything are basically troubling, but let's talk about her recent comments about immigration in particular. Mm. Uh, in July of 2018, as the family separation policy was in full swing, she visited a migration detention center in Bristow, Virginia, 
presumably to see if unaccompanied minors could be purchased cheap to sell their organs. <laughs> um, when asked about what scriptures, this is so fucked up. When asked about what scriptures came to mind as she saw desperate refugees having just fled violence and poverty, separated from their families and held against their will, she said the following, quote, I think so many people have taken biblical scriptures out of context on this to say stuff like, well, Jesus was a refugee. And yes, he did live in Egypt for three and a half years, but it was not illegal. If he had broken the law, then he would then he would have been sinful and would not be our Messiah. Wow. Okay. So let's just take a minute and break down what she meant. For some pointless context, uh, the story of Jesus's flight into Egypt as a baby is only found in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, We covered this in detail back in episode 13, but just as a quick reminder, when Jesus was born, wise men came from the east, guided by a new star, where they presented him with what every newborn needs, heavy metals and bitter ointments. Um, (laughs) King Herod, now fearing some upstart king in Bethlehem, ordered the murder of all kids two years old and younger in a massacre so horrible and terrifying that no one but Matthew wrote it down. Right. (laughs) Um, Warned by an angel just in time, Joseph fled into Egypt with Mary and Jesus, where they stayed for three years until the death of Herod. So, faced with the modern-day human tragedy that is, not was, is the family separation policy, Paula White's response was to ensure us all that Joseph most certainly followed all the relevant bureaucratic policies at the Egyptian border. (laughs) Right. While at the same time dismissing the suffering of actual immigrant children because they had failed to fill out Form uh, 29B in triplicate. Yeah. Yeah. All while claiming to be the voice of the man who said, quote, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. This from the same fucking book of Matthew as the story of Jesus in Egypt. Right. So, yeah, to be it's cl- exhausting. It's exhausting to defend their fucking Jesus as an atheist. Yeah. To defend their the concept of their fucking Jesus from these people. From themselves. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm and so tired clear, of this. She brought this story up. It wasn't thrust yeah. upon her. Uh, it's a story that is absolutely and unequivocally about Jesus fleeing violence as a refugee. And she brought it up to condemn actual refugee, refugees fleeing actual violence. So, yeah. anywho, she is not generally well accepted in the larger Christian community because, among other heretical beliefs, she is a huge proponent of the proper, prosperity gospel. Of course she is. Of course. Now, the pro- prosperity gospel is deserving of its own deep dive another time because since its invention in the 1950s, it is split into many different iterations. But in a nutshell, it basically teaches that wealth is a sign of spiritual strength. And that if you give That's right. your money, you will get money tenfold back. Right. Which yeah. works seed, seed perfectly money. every time. <laughs> yeah. So if you ever wonder why televangelists like Benny Hinn, Joel Olstein, or Creflo Dollar can wear $10,000 suits while encouraging their congregation to get payday loans and send the, mo- send the money to them, while preaching about the guy who threw the money changers out of the temple, it's the prosperity gospel. Yeah. yeah. If it seems strange that an evangelical community could champion a president who is a living embodiment of the seven deadly sins, has broken at least nine of the Ten Commandments, and whose favorite part of the Bible, if he ever read it, would certainly be when Lot slept with his daughters. I give you the prosperity gospel. Uh, Wait, which commandment do you think he hasn't broken? (laughs) I think he hasn't killed anybody yet. And I might almost certainly be wrong. you know about. Mm. That's right. Yeah, he's for sure made graven images. I see him doing... Graven imaging, image graving all the time. Yeah. I just don't think there's a trigger guard on a gun big enough for him to slip that fat finger into. So. <laughs> mean. <laughs> no, it isn't. Fuck him. I don't care. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed you calling him out for being mean to Donald fucking Trump. That's great. Well, I'm just. I was just defending Jesus from Paula White. What's even fucking <laughs> happening today? <laughs> <laughs> I got guys. I gotta hang up. Something's up. I'm like, you know, I'm, <laughs> no. This is this shit happens, man. I at one point on my other show got accused of being a, a a Christian apologist just because it's like at some point you have to go. Well, no, you guys. Jesus was actually way better than you're making him. You guys are being dicks. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what could Donald Trump possibly see in a thrice divorced, bankruptcy loving, refugee bashing charlatan with Fox and Friends good looks? who spends her days lying to and stealing from her credulous followers while telling rich men that their virtue is matched only by their wealth and that there is a gilded gateway into heaven just for them. I have no idea. Yeah, what attract, what it's like, opposites attract, I guess. (laughs) Weird. But 
As the crisis on the southern border is morphing from a made-up crisis to an actual crisis because of the actions of this administration, and as talk of resurrecting the family separation policy, as well as transporting refugees to sanctuary cities and dumping them onto the streets, and calling up the military to build refugee camps inside the United States ramps up, rest assured that our president is listening to the tempered, moderating voices of the likes of Paula White. I told you I didn't like these subjects. <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, if nothing else, if he gives her his money, he'll get more money. So, yeah. so of course he's going to listen to what, her. What happens when two grifters run into each other? <laughs> they just end up with know. each other's watches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if he comes out wearing her shoes at some point, we'll know. <laughs> so, well, she seems like a real, uh, a real, a real Georgia peach. So there you go. Well, there's Paula right. White for y'all. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks for for nothing, and let's move on. Fuck off, Paula. Oh.